going to do now is run through how to um, size your cables for a system. The two things we want to check or calculate is voltage drop and current carrying capacity. So voltage drop is more important, I guess, when you've, when you've got a, a longer length of cable, so coming from your MPPT over to your panel. And normally, the current carrying capacity is more of an issue or a problem to check when you're running from your battery to uh, your power board. So if you're running inverter or whatever else and it's drawing high current, that's when you want to check your cable's current carrying capacity. Over to the board. Yeah, so voltage drop and current carrying capacity. So we're going to start with voltage drop and go through a scenario really quickly. This is the formula you need to know. Voltage drop, so that'll give you the volt, how, how many volts drop um, over this situation, which is two times the length of the cable one way, times by I is the current, times by rho is resistivity, uh, divided by the area, cross-sectional area of your cable. So length of the cable one way, I is your max continuous current, um, and P is resistivity, which is ohms per meter per millimeter squared, not meter squared. And that standard figure for a copper cable is 0 0.0183. So that's all we really need to know. Remember that. Um, before you start your problem, you need to know these two things, or three, your panel or arrays volts and amps, so your maximum operating voltage and amps, uh, and the length. We'll go through a... So I've done some quick math. Um, didn't say before, maximum 3% voltage drop. That's the ma maximum acceptable voltage drop for a system from your, from your solar panel to your MPPT. So the question I want to work out is what size cable do I need, which is area? That's A. Um, the scenario is we've got a caravan with two times 285 watt panels. They're in series and the length is five meters. Uh, first job you do, grab your panel specifications. So from the back of the solar panel, we've got a VMP of 31.65 volts and an IMP of 9 amp. Um, so you work out your system information now. So they're in series. VMP times by 2, 63.3 volts. IMP is 9 amps. That stays the same. We work out now what an acceptable voltage drop is. So we've said it's 3%. Um, from panel to MPPT, so 63.3 times by 0 0.03 equals 1.899 volt. So that is how much voltage drop we can accept. Now it's just math, grab that formula. VD equals two times L times rho times I over A. Plug in the numbers, so we said voltage drop accepted is 1.899. We know all those figures, two times five, Times by resistivity, times by max amp is 9 over A. Go to some quick math, flip your um, 1 over 8.99, flip both sides, so then A is that up here, so it's 1.647 divided by 1.899 equals area equals 0 0.67 millimeters squared. Um, so I recommend whenever you're doing this, um, there's a company called Ticab. Um, I just go to their, they supply auto cable. I go to their specifications online. I want the nominal area, which is that column. We needed 0.867. So we'll have to go up to the, um, to this cable here. So that's a three mil, it's called a three mil cable. It's got a cross sectional area, 1.13 millimeters squared. Can carry 16 amp. Um, so therefore we get a three mil AWD a okay, doke. So now we're checking the current carrying capacity of a cable. The three things, or the two things you really need to know is the voltage and the maximum continuous current, which is, that's just the power of your system. Caravan, so we're doing this scenario, 12 volt battery, 12 volt, say 12.5 volt operating. We need to figure out a power, a load. Um, so we need the maximum continuous load. Work out what you will use. So in this scenario, I'm saying we're using a 2000 watt inverter. We've got 100 watts uh, of fridge and lights in the caravan. That's the maximum that we're going to be all using at once. So inverters are not 100% efficient. So we you get this out of their specs, say it's a 90% efficient. We'll give you 2200 watt approximately. So I'll just add that 200 watt down here. So we're saying that we're going to be running the inverter to its full capacity for an extended period of time along with the fridge and the lights. 
um, giving us 2,300 watt draw. Um, to calculate amp, you do 2,300 divided by that operating voltage, 12.5 volt battery bank, gives us 184 amps um, of current. So when we work out what our maximum continuous current is, then we, that's when we go back and grab our factures spec and go look up all the different cables. So we'll go to a battery and starter. This is a single cable. Uh, so we go down the list here, two gauge is has an operating current at 30 degrees of 188 amps. A one gauge is 210 amps. But to do this by the book, we should be putting in a fuse that is um, 90% of the cable's um, maximum rated current. To make all this work, we would pick the one gauge cable, 210. 90% of that's around 190. So that's our fuse should protect the cable uh, at 190 amp. And um, that would still satisfy our current carrying capacity here of 184. So AWG 1, 1, 210 amp, our fuse should be less than 190 amp, which is a, an odd number. So you'd be using something like a mega fuse. They come in 150, 175, 200. A lot of people will make the assumption that 175 amp, never gonna be able to use that because it'll, it'll just blow. That's not how fuses work. You have to look up their specifications. You can actually, I went and had a look, a 150 amp mega fuse will run at, run at 3000 seconds at 184 amps before it would blow. So it is more than enough um, cap uh, capacity to run your system. The other thing to look at if you, to, to drop this down to use the AWG2 cable, for example, you know, the realistically look at, are you going to be running that inverter at full power um, with your fridge and lights and everything on? Um, and if and if you were, how long would it be for? Um, those sort of factors can let you, you know, bring your cable sizes uh, and fusing down.